This is Mark Allspot over Lane Conveyor Company. This lesson is going to go over our advanced belt tab in the new belt analyst version 13. But first we're going to look at the uh, kind of review the standard design uh, which is the traditional design where you see a, uh, a belt rating, a safety factor for that belt, and a percentage of what we where we limit the excel and deceleration forces during starting and stopping. That safety factor or 6.67 in this case, which is standard for most steel cord belts, is represented by that gray line. And the top of the chart is uh, where the 140% limit is for the acceleration and deceleration tensions. And that equates in this case to uh, 6.7 divided by 1.4 or 4.7 to 1 safety factor for acceleration and deceleration. But the actual safety factor in a belt in this case is 7.8 which is the maximum running tension versus the braking strength of the belt and the actual accelerating safety factor is 5.2 which is the maximum starting tension in this case divided by the braking strength in the belt. Now we're going to go on to local tensions. Local tensions is what we consider to be um, what's happening across the width of the belt at any place on the conveyor. Our maximum running tension, if we if we look at uh, where the belt's not being stretched abnormally, uh, across the width, the average is going to be the same pretty much across the width of the belt. And if we apply our maximum acceleration tension and minimum deceleration tensions, we can get the range of tensions at this particular section of belt any, at any time during this particular loading condition. But when the belt goes through uh, such things as a transition length, parts of the belt's being stretched more than other parts of the belt. Therefore, we don't get an equal distribution of tension anymore. Our tension diagram across the width of the belt might look something like this, where the edges are being stretched a little bit more, therefore have a little bit more tension in it than the average in that section. And other places along the belt edge, we have low tensions or lowest tensions. So it's those high maximum local tensions and those uh, minimum local tensions during running, starting, and stopping that we're interested in. And uh, we're interested in them through the full range of uh, belt operation. But these local stresses need to be calculated for every location on the conveyor that causes local stretch in the belt. This include, includes transitions, vertical curves, horizontal curves, and any turnover. So wherever the, the belt is getting stretched abnormally across the width, that's what we're interested in. But we're not done yet. The weakest length in the belt is always the splice. And so we need to try to figure out what the strength of the splice is versus the, uh, the belt strength or the belt, the strength in the virgin belt that comes from the factory. To do this, we're going to use uh, the German DIN 22110-3, which is a, a spe German specification for dynamic splice efficiency in a conveyor belt. In this uh, DIN specification, um, they simply build belts, uh, put splices in them, put them on a big test machine, has a hydraulic ram that stresses the belt between a high point and a low point, and the ram continues through a time cycle to stress the belt until failure. In this case, four belts, one run at 80%, one at 60%, and one at 50%, and one at about 53% are tested, and the number of cycles to failure are plotted on this chart. In this case, the asymptote of the line, which is uh, where most steel, courts, steel cord belts fall, is approximately 50% the breaking strength of the belt. Some steel cord belts can be higher than that, Fabric belts uh, typically are down around 33% of the braking strength of the fabric belt. And if you have mechanical fasteners, they may fall down as low as 20-25% of the braking strength of the belt. Again, this is a fatigue strength limit for the splice. What we're trying to do is make sure that in the range that we operate at, we want to maintain at least a 2 to 1 splice efficiency. Uh, based on the dynamic fatigue strength of the splice. If we go over to Belt Analyst and click on the Advanced Design 
uh, button on the belt tab. You'll see the screen uh, has a little recap of the tensions we just discussed. The first part of the top part of the screen is pretty much what you've seen before. The belt selection, cover gauges, uh, maximum minimum belt width, weight and, weight and modulus. The next section of the screen actually shows the minimum safety factor and maximum and actual safety factor uh, based on the rating of the belt. Then we get into the local tension limits, 115% uh, the minimum safety factor and then the actual safety factor and the low tension numbers. And we also show where those locations are. In this case, tail transitions, head transitions, vertical curves. It highlights where those low tension areas or, or uh, high tension areas are. And then finally, the bottom of the screen, the dynamic splice efficiency, the minimum splice safety factor that we'll allow in this particular case as a user, and the actual splice safety factor. So if any of the actual numbers actually get lower than the, uh, than the uh, allowable, they'll turn red and you'll see them uh, be flagged. For further questions, submit a ticket at support.overlandconveyor.com for the quickest response.